Welcome, Ronin Fishing. Vinny Milk is here once again. This is a uh, second video in the kind of advanced uh, spy bait, spin bait series. So it's, it's two of three. We're going to go over equipment today. So last video, which I'll link in here, is more of the theory and application. It kind of stats on the baits. And I picked two of them. Like I said, I picked the Dew Realis and I picked the 90 and the 80 uh, and the 80G Fix. Um, which I consider just the 80. Very slight weight differentials on there. But um, I picked those because those are the most popular. They have the most colors. Of course, like I said, there's an alpha. There is also like 100, and there's even a super small version um, of that, and then of course other brands. But the Dewey Realis is the most popular. And I, uh, the ones that I primarily fish are right here, which are, you know, the hooks. The hooks like to get on each other, but... Uh, Come on, dude. There's your little size differential. And the weighting system in there is slightly different. Just due to the size. So, we're gonna get into equipment on this now. So we'll start with probably the one that ha is the more, most complex. Um, and that's when you're throwing, you know, the 80. You're gonna be using, you can use a really light bait caster on this, but primarily you're gonna be using spinning equipment. So when I'm looking for a spinning rod to utilize this technique, sure, you can use a wide range and uh, you have your own preference, then you'll go with it. But to really get down and dirty, to utilize, to, to get the most out of it, you want the right equipment. And I'm gonna show you what I use and then kind of the range of what you should use. So right here, this is uh, one of the old, it's an old one, it's a, uh, um, NRX by G Loomis. And um, I've used some St. Croix because St. Croix you know, used to be a sponsor of mine and I had a number of them. But the more importantly, uh, you know, really high, uh, you don't need a high, super high end rod, but you know, this is one of those techniques like a drop shot where you want a rod that isn't, um, isn't cheap uh, in mater building material. So you can find the best rod that you can for the price that you can afford. That's what I suggest. But this is an NRX, and I back in the day I got a deal on it. You know, it's green. All the you know, this is when they had the green version. But this is a six eight, medium light, extra fast. And I, you know, Saint Croix has a similar action like that. Various companies, their actions are going to be a little bit different. But what I want is I want the sensitivity, and the give. Because one, I want to be able to feel that bait. When you're in there, you can feel this bait move. There's a certain with coupled with the right line and whatnot, you're going to feel how this bait is acting. And uh, when you get a fish on there, you'll have a tendency to lose fish if you have too stiff a rod, just like you would like a crankbait by pulling it, you know, it out of the fish's mouth. Because sometimes these fish, you know, you're going, when they're not really on the bait and you're getting those marginal fish that are, you know, inactive, which this bait is awesome at doing, they come and they might get a, a hook or they might just get hooked a little bit. And in order to play them and, and keep them buttoned, you want the rod with a little bit of give. But like I said, you don't want to sacrifice that sensitivity. So I like that fast, extra fast action. Uh, you could probably get away with something a little bit more, but I like that fast and extra fast taper. One for the sensitivity, I can feel it, but then it does have that give uh, with the medium light. It gives uh, and allows that fish when he makes a run. Now we go into that. So depending on what rod you decide to get, like I said, I got the 6.8, medium light, extra fast. Now, what is another important aspect of this so that you can fill the bait and you can utilize this as your tuning fork or your your antenna that goes underneath the water is to couple that out with the right reel. And uh, too many, in my opinion, too many people, well, I'm gonna go with a 3,000 or 35 or 4,000 because I want the, I wanna be able to cast it far, I want the line capacity. And that's not how you should look at the spinning rod if you're getting really into this. And this is one of those baits I would hope that you would want to invest a little bit of time into and effort. So for this rod, and it depends on how you hold your spinning reel. So I tend to hold mine, I usually have one finger behind and then I run my uh, index finger along the uh, shaft. So for this particular rod, I was able to balance it with a 2500 series CI4. Um, usually a 2000, 2500 series for me, the way I grip that rod, it balances where I can just set it in there and that rod perfectly 
lays level how I'm holding it. What does that do? Well, it allows you to really, uh, really capitalize on the quality of that rod and to utilize the sensitivity of that to actually feel what's going on with this bait. Now, on the spinning setup, if you look at some other resources, you'll see with these spin baits or spy baits, they tend to work a lot better on light line. So anywhere from like, I will say for the 80 and spinning rods, anywhere from four to eight pound test, I go four to seven is pretty much, and I found a happy medium generally wherever I go is using a six pound. And once you lay these lines out, you can really see a difference um, in pliability and just the, you know, the, the diameter of these lines uh, when you lay like a six to an eight and you can see the difference it, however subtle that is it does affect the bait now you can do straight um and that's probably recommended but i don't i don't do that one because it you know, in order to save money i i do the backing method and it seems to be more efficient as a strike indicator as well but here's what i do different so what do you typically hear when people back their spinning reels well they usually use um you know a 10 to 15 pound backing, um, I don't do that. And specifically with this technique, I use a six pound suffix because they have a really good six pound braid. And I'm sure that if there's other brands that have a six pound braid that has you know super low diameter, um, you could utilize those too. But I use that on here. And one of the reasons is, is because the diameter is so thin that it helps cut through the water. So you're, mat, you're, 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 not, you're hindering the, the spin bait less than you would with that 15 pound that's going to hold the, the lure up a little bit more it's um it's going to be i guess more impactful on the bait itself now with that being said so when i'm doing the spin bait typically when i run a leader when i'm just going somewhere i will take my i will run the leader where the knot because you do and we'll go in another video about the albright knot and or how you how you tie this leader or how i tie the leader on but i'll run it to where it's like right here so it's not impeding the spool and it's uh or it's not getting caught by other line because if you ever had your knot in here sometimes it'll get caught well this is one of the exceptions to that i will run this and i'll have two loops in the spool so technically we're looking at roughly an 18 or probably a 12 to 15 foot leader and i just make sure that i really trim that knot down the reason being is i want as long as fluorocarbon leader on that so one it you know so the fish can't see it and recognize it but two so that there's no so that that weight of that fluorocarbon helps keep it down in that tracing mode that i'm utilizing this because i wanted to stay in that depth level wherever i'm going so that helps it uh also you know with that the um with that being said like i said it goes back to cost savings so you can save some money by doing it that way but um you trim the knot we'll go i'll go over that in another video so that um, you don't have that impactfulness. So when you have that knot in there, sometimes it gets caught and it, you know, jacks you up when you're casting, but there is a way to really trim it or do the knot successfully where you can spool it at least a couple times around in there and be able to throw it. But that's how I do that with this setup. Now, um, is there anything else I need on the spinning rod? I don't think so. I think I got pretty much over it. Oh, the other thing. So with equipment, this is one of those baits. I'm, I'm a huge guy on snaps. But when it comes to these lures here, this is one of the few hard baits where I will not throw a snap on there. And that's because I don't want it to hinder the action. Granted, you'd think a snap would actually give it a little bit more, but I'm trying to make this as natural as possible. So I don't want anything else that the fish can key on. So I actually tie direct to this. And I tie the, you know, I believe it's, uh, I can't remember, it's a three, uh, it's in my other video. I can't remember the name on it because I just tie it. Uh, three, um, um, tag knot and uh, it, uh, if I have to I can link that in there maybe I'll link it in there uh, as well or uni knot maybe that's what it is or you can, you can do a palomar but the uni knot seems to be the most successful especially with lighter lines but I tie directly to these all right so if you want to throw the 90 which a lot of us uh, I like throwing the 90 I think it it's a great bait as well and when I go to these other fisheries that have larger fish or maybe the water clarity isn't the soup the clearest that um as clear as i'm used to fishing i'll go to casting and a lot of people feel more confident with casting gear now in this regard um it's a little less 
um, intensive as the spinning rod, uh, but you do want that action. So I prefer like using a you know small jerk bait rod um, or a rod you know that's got that taper that has that give to it. I still want the I still want the you know the, the graphite. I don't want a glass rod because I want to be able to feel what's going on underneath the water. So here for me, I have a St. Croix here. It's a legend, which you get the legend tournaments. Those are fairly reasonable price and they're awesome rods as well. This is a six eight medium uh, with the extra fast. And I actually use this. This is my jerk bait rod, rod I throw uh, typically in the spring. A lot of mega baths, uh, you know, like the Vision One Tens and stuff on here, or uh, small crank baits, small finesse crank baits. But I use this rod, this um, this action for uh, this nine for the dual reales ninety uh, spin bait. But what you'll see here is I also got you know low profile reel, and here's the big thing on this. So. On these ones, uh, you should be using, eight, you can use eight to 12 pound test. Of course, there's guys that can go up. And in some days, it won't have that much of an effect. But if you really want the application, you want the full aspect of this bait to really show itself, this 90, you wanna use that lighter line. And so on this one, I mean, yes, I go down to eight, but generally now, I'm going to places like getting ready to go to a tournament I've never been to. I will run the 10 pound test because then if I if it's not a real spin bitey area or whatnot, then I can I can change it up, go back to throwing a crankbait. And I usually throw most of my crankbaits on or my finesse cranks and stuff on 10 pound test. But the 10 pound test to me is the the best compromise when it comes to you know action and uh, not hindering the bait as much. So the 10 pound test, um, and if you can get away with it, if you just have a dedicated rod for this, go eight, maybe even six on here, that would be awesome. But uh, eight is eight to 10 is probably the best I could recommend or on this, but you can cast that little bait really far. And guys will talk about the gear ratio here. Now, the slower probably the better if you are not very in tune with what's going on. I prefer fast, gear ratios because I can always slow down in my opinion. I just gotta be cognizant of what I'm doing and I can really slow it down and trace. But I do not run the braid leader on the casting gear just because if you get backlashes, it's super hard to deal with. And um, so I run just straight fluoro on, on those. But there you go, that's the general equipment that you really need. So just to, I guess, summarize that, uh, 6 eight to six, 6.10, um, spinning rod, which I guess I didn't even go over that because I, I showed you what I use, but a 6.8 to 6.10 spinning rod, uh, medium to medium light, extra, I want a fast, extra fast action, pretty high quality rod um, with, uh, you want to match that rod with the appropriate reel that balances out for how you grip the, how you grip the rod, how you want that thing to lay just where you can just open your hand and the rods is going to lay. Uh, flat doesn't the, the tip doesn't carry it over and the butt doesn't carry it back then with the uh, casting gear you pretty much the best way to do it is to look at your jerk bait rod what you throw like a 110 with or your finesse jerk baits which for me 6 8 6 10 medium medium light extra fast fast action even the bait casters gear ratios up to you but i like fast you know i slow down line sizes on these spinning rods four to eight or are you four to seven casting anywhere from uh i'd go down to six but just go eight to twelve but if you can throw six on there that'd be awesome but just all around eight or eight and ten is the best straight knots for both these techniques uh or for both these baits both these rod setups um anyway like subscribe i'm going to do the third one and we're going to go on the lake and I'm going to show you how to utilize this stuff. Maybe we'll catch something. I'm not. I'm literally just going to go out there and we're going to go through it. How to trace, how to really utilize your electronics to do it. Um, how to count it down. How to fish it uh, over. It depends on where I go. If I go to Table Rock, I might run down there because there's some cl clean water. We can fish it over some vegetation. We can fish it around some rocks. Or I mean, vegetation, wood and rocks, we can go out deep, we can do it, we can run it shallow. There's a number of different techniques, but we'll go over that in um, video three. But anyway, I appreciate the uh, support, like and subscribe, and I'll talk to you later.